I'm Captain Eddie Castle in Making Shavings. I got a little something to show you. Yeah, I got to start a project. I'm never any good unless I got a cup of Joe. But that's what I mean. My cup of Joe. That's it. I turned this out of some black walnut. And looking at the date on it, I did it 20 years ago. Yeah, we went from this box good, craft supplies. You heard it bounce around. And I got the sleeve and the top. And I want to turn this into a little bit better condition. I got some splotches on it and all. As old as it is, it's never seen a dishwasher. But I can't say the wife didn't wash it. She won't anymore. But hey, I got a whole lot to tell you and a couple of tips. Stick around. You know what the deal is? You got to watch. Captain Eddie Castellan. In the shop, that's a disaster. I want to turn this block four by four to make the jam chuck. Now, I want to cheat a little bit because I've got one that's, well, I'm not going to cheat. It's what I should have done before. I've got the sleeve I can measure that goes on it. And I take those measurements and put them on the block. Now, I'm going to use my step center. See the step center? I don't like the big ones. This is about a half inch. With that, my tailstock, I cleaned out the tailstock with the little, the little green things, all right? Then I'm gonna mount my block of wood and start shaping it. But you see that? That'll go thump, 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 thump. So right now, I'm gonna take the corners off a little bit so I don't get the thump, 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 thump. Then we'll get back to it. Just so you know what I mean by knocking the corners off. See what I have here? I took the corners off this on my bandsaw vertical because I got a really good 3 8 inch six boot a three tooth blade <clears throat> or six tooth blade pardon me round it off I mark the center with the scratch off because I want to put it in between the step center and the tailstock that's how I'm going to hold this I got it round knocked off some of the sides put a, te uh, a tenon on it that is the right size Use my little gauge to make sure I'm not too much off. Why? I want to get that profile jaw to match this notch and pull it down as close as possible. So I'm getting movement. Movement will be my dying step here. All right, let me chop this up. Safety wear and shield. Going for about half speed. Uh, 1,500, 2,000, no. Than Good sharp roughing gouge with a 45 degree angle on it. See what taking those corners off did? Nice and smooth. And if I chuck it up, hold it, I put a little more pressure on the step center and go back to it. Got it in my chuck. <clears throat> See, I knocked it down a pretty good bit. Move some of the junk out the way. I'm going to bring the tailstock up because I don't want any bounce in this. So that's a tail tailstock on the center I established when I had it between centers. So I'm going to snug that up. I'm going to start sizing this. To size it, I got off my calipers. I measure the smallest part, which is right here. Okay. I'm going to go in and put that on the send, which means I have to take about an eighth of an inch off. Now I can do that with my roughing gouge. Bad name for a great tool.
little bit more. Okay, I checked this end and this end. Then I took my skew and did some sweeping cuts, mostly downhill. Then I fit my cover in. Look at that. That is on. Look at that good looking guy. That is on there. Now I'm going to bring up my soft touch on this end. Now, if I still had my glue block on the end of it, I'd have a hole in my glue block centering it up. So I could put my center to center and then work on taking that tailstock, I mean, that glue block off. Easy peasy. I'm going to go on with this. I'm going to bring my tailstock up, but I said I'm going to use my soft touch. This is my soft touch. You can't find it in a catalog. you got to make it yourself. That's a three-quarter ten tap. I got it at the Ace Hardware store in the corner. And then I put it in there on a three-quarter ten bolt in my jaws, and I spun it to the shape I wanted it. You can make one of these, and you put it right on your revolving center. And the beauty is, when you're making cuts, like just little final cuts or sandings or whatever, you don't go metal to metal. You go metal to wood. I'm going to lock it in. Put a little bit of pressure on it, just a little bit. Look how it spins. Is that sweet or what? Now I'm going to start sanding it back out. Just a light, light sand. Just because I don't like scratches in my stainless steel, I'm going to take this blue painter's tape and wrap it around, put it right on that seam to keep my, whoa, well, to keep my sandpaper from touching the stainless. Won't be getting them away for the finish or anything. <clears throat> well, I'll keep going. It took me a few minutes because that roll of blue tape was left behind when Moses left here. And it looked rough. I'm going to go 400 grit to start this thing out. And I'm bringing my speed way down. Why? Because I'm trying to sand, not a braid. Nice and easy. If I was smart, I'd stop this thing. Get my tool rest out of the way and approach it from the bottom. Oh yeah, look at the difference. I can get to keep my fingers. I don't want to get too serious on this because I don't want to take out my poly. Right there and do that little corner. Now, if this is your raw piece and you haven't put the cup on, or if you have put the cup on, you don't have to sand much more than this. This is 400. But it left most of my stuff still in there. But this got it ready. I might go 600 just to polish it up. I forgot to push the button when I put the 600 on it. But look, the image is still there. It's all cleaned up. I want to put a coat of CA on it. Here's a tip. <clears throat> if you're working CA, you got to use rubber gloves, right? Well, I don't do good with rubber gloves. So I got these. A friend of mine, Mike, gave them to me. He says they're called pig rubbers. I am not certain what they're good for except this. Because I don't have any pigs. But I'm going to put them on. Still got a few of my hands, free use of my hands, and where I'm gonna make contact with the super glue is covered. I gotta mention my sanding materials come from Vince Welch at Vince's Wooden Wonders. Uh, he's a good friend, really knows stuff about sandpaper. And this one we use for epox for super glue. This is Starbonds super super thin. I can't read a super fast thin. I need to get better glasses. I'm sorry, I need to get glasses. Got my eyes fixed. They got them 2020 at a distance. But boys, and the close up stuff suck. One third of one third of a sheet of, of paper towel. You do the math. Light. 
even coats. You can't go back and forth thing. It's gonna gum up on you. Do you need good ventilation? Yes, because if you don't right about now, you know it. So I got a little fan blowing in here. I got that $6 fan from Walmart, works great. There's my pad, nothing on my fingers. I can fold the pad out, get me a little bit of a clean spot, wait a second or two and go back to it. I'm way down on speed, I'm probably 300 RPMs. I like Starbound because it's a family owned company. The products are fresh. And if you got a problem, they can help you on the telephone. A lot of times you're not going to get that out of a catalog service. That's two coats. It's starting to look pretty good. And what I would do is I'll let this dry for a few minutes. Oh, cure. I use that term wrong. Cure. Then I'm going to put one more coat on and take one of my scotch Bright pads to it just to take the fuzz off. Because there is a little fuzz on there right now. Don't rush it. Let it cure. And oh, yeah. Unless you're crazy. Use accelerant. Uh, never mind. Don't use accelerant unless you're crazy. Let's crank it up again. See how I got a few little high spots, low spots, but I'm gonna take a scotch bright pad. I'm gonna buff them down. These come in several grits or textures. I find that I'm, I do best with this in the white. I don't like the red, it's a little bit coarse for me. Much more uniform. I think we're ready to put a coat of wax on it. This piece looks much better now to taking some of the dark spots out. I want to go on it with a coat of Renaissance wax. Put it on paper towel. I put it on paper towel and I get asked that a lot of times, why well, don't I use a piece of cloth or whatever? Here it is, straight up. The only rags that come to my la lathe are the ones I wear on my back. Otherwise, I'm using paper towels. If this catches, it's gonna tear. If a towel catches or a cloth catches, it's gonna tear my finger off. I'd rather lose a little paper than my finger. Now, isn't that uniform? I believe wax has got a cure. I can give it about five minutes. I'm going to take the same piece of paper towel, one-third of one-third of a roll, one-third of one-third of a sheet, and buff it out. Well, there you go. It was kind of grungy when we came in. Nice sheen on it now. That good-looking guy's picture comes up. That's when I had a mustache. And I had glasses. I'm getting glasses. But that's what we're doing today, playing with recycling things, cleaning things up we have. Now I can get another 15, 20 years out of this. But with the CA on it, might hold up to being rinsed off once in a while. Don't ever put them in a dishwasher. She thinks it's broken. I have it unplugged. I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. I've been in a shop making shavings. How about you? Get on out there. Oh yeah, by the way, Thanks for the last year or two. It's been really, really nice. Oh, man, this is good stuff. I like it. This would turn as a note that I support Freedom Pens. This is a thank you note I got from Freedom Pens. Wow. Not only do they protect us and service, but they appreciate it. Freedom Pens.